What is up guys, Archon Time here bringing you guys another YouTube video. I know this video is a little late, patch already dropped, usually I try to get these out ahead of time, but like I said in the other video, it's been a rough month, I've been trying to keep up with everything that's coming out, like there, it's just a landslide of information that has just dropped. I mean Smash announced a new character today as well, I'll be doing a video on that. Uh, so expect two uploads today, one for this and then one for Smash a little later. Uh, I'm going to try to also later on tonight at 9pm Eastern play some Crash Bandicoot 4 because that comes out today as well. So if you guys want to come hang out with me, watch me play some Crash 4, down in the description, I'll put my Twitch. So come hang out, have a good time, enjoy some of uh, the classic Crash Bandicoot. And with that, let's go ahead and talk about the new heroes and the new minions. Ragnaros the Fire Lord. Die, insects. Passive. After you kill 20 enemy minions, get Sulphurus. At the end of your turn, give your left and right most minions plus 4 plus 4. Um, it's definitely a lot better than his last hero power where it costs 2 gold to deal uh, 8 damage to 2 minions. His last hero power was more of a win early hero power. Uh, this one seems to be more of a mid game to late game hero power. It's basically plus 8 plus 8 once you kill 20 minions. And if you happen to face a lot of people who are buying tokens, because tokens are in high demand, it's kind of like the token killing hero. So you really have to pay attention in the early game when you're facing Ragnaros. Like for the first buy, do you buy a 2 1 or the 2 1 Murloc? Do you buy Alley Cat? Uh, do you want to give him, you know, a quicker Sulphurus, or are you okay with settling and, you know, maybe trading a victory with him instead of outright dealing damage to him? I mean, it makes you think before you play, for sure. Uh, I think against Rafam, he would actually be really strong, especially if he can just get some high health minions that trade into whatever tokens uh, Rafam has. Genvala. Avalanche, passive. After you play three elementals, reduce the cost of Bob, or upgrading Bob's Tavern by two. So this is going to be your elemental hero. I like the hero power. I think that it is pretty good. It's definitely an upgrade over Bartendotron. I think it's definitely an upgrade over Groot as well. I can't think of his actual name, but I'm going to call him Groot. Uh, what I mean by that is Groot has the effect of whenever you upgrade Bob's Tavern, you get two gold back. So it's basically make, it reduces the cost of Bob's Tavern upgrade by two. And Bartendotron is only by one passively. So this hero power here, you after you play three elementals, reduce the cost of, of upgrading Bob's Tavern by two. That's insane. It's more value than what Groot, sure. Uh, I haven't looked at the elementals yet, so I will maybe reference this later. Rakanishu, Tavern Lightning, cost two. Give a random friendly minion stats equal to your tavern tier. So... This one's kind of interesting for it being a 2 cost. If you think about it, Ragnaros only has to kill 20 minions in order to get plus 8 plus 8 uh, minions, right? It's 4-4 it's four, four over 2 minions, so I'm just going to say plus 8 plus 8. And it costs basically nothing. It costs maybe some HP, because you don't have a hero power that impacts the early game. But this right here, I don't know when you're ever going to find the time with breakpoints to actually get much use out of this, and not to mention it's only one random minion. Uh, for it costing 2, I think they should have made it a target spell, or a target hero power rather. I don't see why, you know, giving plus 3 plus 3 to a certain minion that you want would be that big of a deal. It's, I would even go, I would even argue this is worse than Pyramid. Because again, like I said, the breakpoints, by the time you're, what, 7 gold in, you're going to Tavern Tier 3, I believe? No, I'm sorry. By the time you're 9 gold in, you're going to Tavern Tier 3. When you're on 6 gold, you buy 2 minions, and then... Go to no, it is seven gold. You go to tavern tier three. So by the time you you get to seven gold, I mean you're almost gonna have a full board, and you probably won't have gotten any use out of the hero power because if you're using it, I'm trying to think of like a turn you could actually use it. I guess if you roll poorly on six, you roll once. If you don't get anything that's good, you could then I guess give up your other two rerolls to give to use tavern lightning in order to give something plus two plus two. I mean. You could also, I guess, use it on 5 as well instead of rerolling twice in order to give something plus 2 plus 2. Those are really the only two breakpoints early on that you're going to get the opportunity to use this with. So, I, I just, I don't think this hero power does enough in the early game, and it definitely isn't going to do enough in the mid game either, because it's going to cost you 2 of your gold to use. I don't know. I think Pyramids is better at one gold. I get that's for health, but it doesn't seem like it 
comes out fast enough. It's kind of the same problem I had with Bigglesworth Kitty, where it doesn't impact the early game fast enough, and so you just end up dead before you actually get any value out of it. Sorry, guys, taking a drink of water here. Alakir the Windlord. Squatting insects. Start a combat, give your leftmost minion, Wind Fury, Divine Shield, and Taunt. Uh, probably really good in the early game, for sure. Definitely if you get like a 2 3 minion to start with. Uh, even if you get just a 2 attack minion, most times you're probably trading or you're you know, winning. So, yeah, I think Alakir's probably good at early game. I maybe niche in the late game, depending on what the elementals do. I haven't seen what the elementals do yet. So, another hero power maybe we'll come back to. So, tier 1 elemental, 2 2. Uh, when you sell this, add a 2 2 elemental to your hand. So, yeah. Interesting, for sure. Uh, we talked about the what to play three elementals and it reduces Bob's tavern by two. Well, this is one of the minions that you're probably looking for to do that because it's on tavern tier one. So it counts as one of the elementals you need. You can sell it and you get a second elemental for it. it, it you basically get from what it looks like, you get two gold in, on tavern tier one. Essentially, it costs one gold and you get two elementals and you're one elemental away from your refresh or not your refresh but your reduction. So you play this on one, you can actually sell it back to put it back in the pool and still have a 2-2. Two -two. And then on two, or when you level up or whatever, you can sell it, like I said, get the 2-2. Two -two. Roll one time on Tavern Tier 2 as well if you wanted to. So there's definitely a lot of, uh, a lot of value here. I, I got to imagine just seeing this one that the, uh, the Elemental Hero is very strong. Refreshing Anomaly. Tier 1, Elemental 1-3. One, Battle cry, your next refresh costs zero. So Nose Damu is pretty decent for a hero. Um, I got to imagine that this elemental here is, you know, pretty decent as well. It costs essentially two gold to refresh for zero. The reason I say two gold is because if you sell it, you get one gold back. And your next reroll costs zero. So it kind of makes up uh, the difference. So it actually only costs one gold. You lose one gold in value for it, when you think about it. Uh, if you don't sell it back right away and you get this, then that means that it pretty much pays for itself. Party Elemental. Tier 2. Elemental 2-2. Two, two. After you play an Elemental, give another friendly Elemental plus one plus one. So this is just your traditional Elemental buff. Nothing special here. Tier 2 Elemental. 2 attack, uh, 3 health. Oh, after you play an Elemental, gain 1 health. Okay, so it's like an early game scaling minion for elementals. Uh, I could see this being pretty good, especially if you get a party elemental with it. You give it plus one, plus one, and it ends up with plus one, plus two. And five is a pretty good break point to have. Three, five, pretty good. Even if you don't get the plus one, plus one from the party elemental, you just play a normal elemental with it. I think two, four is not bad. That's what the old uh, demon was. I got nerfed to a two, three. Or is a pretty good breakpoint at Tavern Tier 2. Stasis Elemental, Tier 3 Elemental, plus 4 attack, plus 4 health. Or sorry, not plus 4 attack, plus 4 health, but 4 attack, 4 health. Battlecry, add another random elemental to Bob's Tavern and... F wow. That's actually pretty cool. So the way you'd play this card, for those wondering, you would uh, hang on to it until you're all done rolling, all done buying and all that. You'd, you'd have it in your hand and then you'd play it. That way you get your freeze on that minion, and then next turn you'd buy, if you wanted the elemental that it created, you'd buy it there. So always make sure to play this last. Otherwise, if you reroll after you play it, you'll lose your frozen minion. Arcane Assistant, Tier 3, Elemental, 3 attack, 2 elf. Battle cry, give your other elementals plus 1, plus 1. So instead of giving a random one like the party elemental does, this gives plus 1, plus 1 to all your elementals. So it's basically like a felfin, essentially for... It's actually a weaker Felfin when you think about it. Because Felfin is a 4-4 Murloc. This is a 3-2 Elemental. So it's kind of interesting that it doesn't share the same stat line as something as powerful as what Felfin does, where it can stand alone on the board. Um, Tavern Tier 3, 3-2 really isn't that great. Crackling Cyclone, Tier 3. Elemental, 4 attack, 1 health, Divine Shield, win. Uh... Four attack, you get Divine Shield and you get Wind Fury, so you're basically guaranteed 8 damage in some capacity using this into 
you know, once you buff it, maybe if you can get three of them, you get Mega Wind Fury. You'd have to buff it for the Mega Wind Fury to actually be worth using. Otherwise, it just dies in, on traditional Wind Fury. <clears throat> Whirlwind Tempest. Tier 4. Elemental. Attack 6 health. Your minions have Wind Fury. Wait. Your minions with Wind Fury, sorry, have Mega Wind Fury. So, you don't even actually... So it's just synergy for this card, unless there's something down here in the elemental pool that also gives your other minions Wind Fury. I guess it's also a buff to Alakir's power when you think about it. Because Alakir is basically, uh, what, Wind Fury, Divine Shield, Taunt? You definitely would want this minion with Alakir for sure. Do you imagine like putting something left most as poisonous and just mowing down, has a lot of health, has poisonous, and just mows down your entire opponent's board? Because it attacks four times in a row. Actually, it'd probably, in most cases, probably trade for five minions. Like in the mid-game, that'd be pretty crazy. Wildfire Elemental. Tier 4 Elemental. 7 attack, 3 health. After this minion attacks and kills a minion, deal excess damage to a random adjacent minion. So another overkill. Not bad. I mean, it's not game-breaking. 7-3 uh, isn't going to live. It's going to hit one time, and you're going to hope that it kills two minions. Tier 4. Poisonous 1-1 one, one, uh, Spore. That's all it is. 1-1 one, one Spore. Hmm. I mean, like I said, Poisonous is a strong effect early. I mean, if you were to give this Divine Shield and whatnot, but it's actually, it doesn't have an archetype. Never mind, it doesn't have an archetype. So it really doesn't benefit from anything. It's just kind of a card that you place if you know your opponent's playing Divine Shield and it, or you're facing Pyramid and he has a giant taunt. And you just kind of hope it rams into that giant taunt. Uh, Major Domo Executus. Tier 4, 6, 3 health. Or sorry, 6 attack, 3 health. At the end of your turn, give your leftmost minion plus 1, plus 1 for each elemental you played this turn. Uh, another minion that requires you to pay attention to positioning. I don't mind them. I do find them a little tedious sometimes. Uh, Nomi Kitchen Nightmare. 4 attack, 4 health. After you play an elemental, elementals in Bob ta Bob's Tavern have plus one, plus one for the rest of the game. That's a pretty powerful effect. So, I'm assuming every for every elemental in Bob's Tavern, every time you play one, this counter goes up and up and up and up and up. So if you, you want to trade out elementals, like let's say you, for whatever reason, want, uh, let's see, you, you want Whirlwind Tempest, say. And you don't want to deal with... The, or Actually, a better example would be this one, the Crackling Cyclone. You want to add a Crackling Cyclone to your board, and you have Nomi on the board, and you played a bunch of Elementals earlier in the turn. You should now have like a giant buffed uh, Crackling Cyclone. I think that's pretty good. Um, what else here? Little Rag. Tier 5, Elemental, 4 attack, 4 health. After you play an Elemental, give a random friendly... Minion stats equal to the Elemental's Tavern tier. Yeah. I mean, that's not the worst thing in the world. It's a random friendly minion, though, and usually, like, random effects are pretty rough to deal with. Sometimes you end up with, uh, this, you end up with this on a minion you don't want. I mean, that's kind of the downside to it. For a five-cost card, I almost feel like you should be able to choose which minion. Like, do it like you did up here with, like, the leftmost minion or the rightmost minion. I think that that would be fine as well. Um, and then that way you at least have some control over where the buff goes for a five-tier minion. I, I guess it, it probably scales pretty well. Even though it's only one minion getting buffed, I'm sure it gets out of control in the late game where you're buying, like, three elementals. If you buy three tavern tiers, that's 15-15 worth of stats going across your board. So, I, I don't know. It's kind of hit or miss for me. Without actually like playing it and testing it and seeing how well it interacts. Tavern Tempest. Tier 5 Elemental. 4 attack, 4 health. Battlecry. Add another random elemental to your hand. That's actually pretty good. It's a good standalone 4-4. Four, four. I mean, on 5, it's not the worst thing. And there's always the chance that you get, like, a little rag. Uh, you can't get Domo. Wildfire, you know, Wind Whirlwind Tempest. You know, you just get one of these elementals. Um, the Party Elemental would be pretty good. Get a free refreshing anomaly, gives you a free refresh. Uh, the Cell Elemental wouldn't be bad if you're playing the Elemental uh, Hero. 
this would probably be really good with the, the whatchamacallit, or the, the elemental hero, sorry. It'd probably be really good with him because you basically buy it, you get two elementals, potentially three if you get a elemental, and then that's your three for three gold. You get three gold right back. And you also get your tavern tier reduced by two. So it pays for itself, essentially. Uh, what else we got here? Lieutenant Gar. Tier six elemental, eight attack, one health. Taunt, after you play an elemental, gain one health for each elemental you have. So he scales pretty hard. If you have a full board, like seven elementals, you have to replace one, obviously, then you play it, then you know, that's plus seven health. So it becomes an 8-8, eight, eight, like right out the gate, if you're funneling elementals. Dental Jin. Tier six elemental, six attack, eight health. Taunt, death rattle, summon another random elemental and add a copy of it to your hand. Uh, this one's a bit tricky to play in the late game because you have to have the room for... Oh, no, never mind, death rattle. Oh, never mind. I, I misread the effect. So this one's actually not too bad. Because it'll turn into another elemental. And then you'll also get that elemental added to your hand. So you happen to get the Tavern Tempest as well. And you, you know, float into this elemental. You're actually plussing on gold. Or even if you float into the, the other one that lets you reroll for free, you're basically plussing on gold. It's actually not too bad. Battlegrounds rating update. External Battlegrounds ratings will be reset for all players, and a new progression system will be introduced. The new system is similar to the progression system players are familiar with from our uh, constructed ranked mode. Players will see their rating reset to zero, and all new players will start with zero rating. With every top four placement, players will gain rating up to 300 per win. A player's rating will never go below zero, and they cannot see or cannot lose rating until they've climbed above 2,000. Here are the nuts and bolts of how the new system works. Between 2,000 and 6,000 rating, Every 500 rating, 25, 3,000, etc. will act as the new rating floor where you cannot lose rating. Below 6,500 rating, players will earn a small bonus to their rating gains at the end of the match, which will in turn make for a faster climb. Rating losses will remain consistent. Matchmaking will now be done based on the player's invisible internal rating, which we've been tracking since Battlegrounds launched. <laughs> internal ratings for players will not be reset and will not be affected by the above modifications to external ratings. When your external rating is lower than your intentional or internal rating, you will gain rating faster. Kind of interesting. Okay, and then the rest of these are just for the card game. So basically they're adding in a system to the rating or to the rank system where or they're adding in like an, an all new system essentially. So every 500 is considered like bronze diamond just to you know correlate it with something that you may have already seen in other games or even like you see now in Hearthstone. Bronze, silver, platinum, diamond, whatever. Every 500 equals a new, uh, a new tier. I definitely think it was needed because the way that the game felt when you would win, it was just inflationary. There really was no benefit, to, uh, you know, hitting six, seven, eight, nine, ten thousand. Just it's bound to happen if you play a lot. Is kind of how it felt. So with this system, hopefully that's kind of resolved. That's not the case anymore. Uh, anyways, guys, that is going to do it for this video. Uh, like I said, I think elementals are going to be strong. They're not quite like how pirates are, where they buff inside the battle. They're more like murlocs, where they buff outside the battle. There are some interesting cards where you get, like the death rattle, uh, what is it? Uh, the djinn, where you get a elemental. For just having it on the board, you get like a free card every turn. That's pretty good. Uh, Tempest Element or Tavern or Tempest is really nice. It's kind of like the Primal Fin. I believe it's the Primal Fin, but not quite because it's not a Discover effect. Um, but yeah, Elementals seem pretty strong. Let me know what you guys think about Elementals. Let me know what you guys think about the heroes. Honestly, I think that Alakir is pretty good, especially if you get the Mega Wind Fury one and you have a big health minion with poisonous on it, like a Murloc. I think that that would be really strong. Or does it have to be an elemental? I don't think it has to be an elemental, right? No, nope, just your minions with Wind Fury. So you could easily put this on a Murloc, Alakir's Hero Power, and just blow it down like four or five minions. Um, Rakanishu, probably going to be the weakest of the new ones. Uh, Shenvala, definitely keep an eye on this one too. This one could be really strong as well. Just because there's so much value in playing the elementals and the elementals so much in return. 
Ragnaros will be the other one to keep an eye on. So if I had to rank them, I would probably say uh, Alakir has the most potential, but will probably not be that great. It'll be good early game, if nothing else. Uh, then we'll go up here to, I believe, a Ragnaros, I want to say, will be... Uh, actually, no, I think Shenvala will actually be better than Ragnaros, honestly, just because you can go to Tavern Tier 6 faster than most players will be able to if you play correctly. Uh, or if you get lucky enough. Ragnaros is probably going to be third here, though it's not too far behind the rest of the uh, the first two. Um, Rakanishu is probably going to be dead last in the book. So give me your ratings down below. Let me know what you guys think about the heroes. Let me know if you guys think I'm off off on my uh, evaluation here. And let me know how much fun you guys have been having with Elementals since the patch is already out and I'm a little late with this video. Be sure to hit the like button, guys. It helps me out a lot. It helps me with the YouTube algorithm. Because uh, I do a lot of different games. And the problem with covering a lot of different games is that the algorithm sees that. And if you guys aren't interested in one game, then when that video doesn't do as well as my Hearthstone, or let's say my last Hearthstone video, then it doesn't show up in your guys' inbox. Because it's not the same content or it's not considered as good when I release the next one. So please guys, it's the biggest thing you can do for me is at least like the video. I won't ask you to subscribe to the channel. If you guys want to subscribe, I would appreciate that as well. But be sure to at least leave a like if you did enjoy the video. Thanks for watching, and I will see everybody back here in a little bit for the uh, Smash Brothers character reveal. Later.